Tom Ford made a century in the last of the session. So it's a fine now to reach the final. What a huge evening of snooker for these two. Tom Ford yet to win a ranking title. He's looking for his third final. Of course, Jordan Brown did win one at the Welsh Open 2021. But this is by far his best run since then. They've both knocked out some big hitters along the way this week. It's all, though, about the next few hours to reach the final against either O'Sullivan or Zhang on Sunday. So, the second session of the first semi final of the International Championship. It's 4 4, Jordan Brown and Tom Ford. Best of 17. Just a little bit of noise in the audience. Big crowd in again. for a big session of snooker. And it's good because we're down to one table. The only downside sometimes of longer matches is if they're one-sided, then the audience are short-changed. But I get the feeling, Alan McManus, that's not going to be the case here. Could be very close all evening. Yeah, I think so. Good afternoon or good morning to everyone around Europe. It's beautifully poised, this match now, isn't it? Jordan would have been delighted with the start in the first session. Could quite easily have been 4 0 at the first interval, but it didn't happen. So both players can be satisfied in, in different ways, I suppose, coming in to the crucial evening session, all locked up at 4 4. Yeah, I mean, in some ways it feels like a different match, but the fact that they're starting at 4-4, everything that's gone on prior to this, they can just put to one side. As I said, he's effectively a best of nine. Brown started very well. He made the practice 75, 117. Then he won a black ball frame for 3-0. Was in front in the next, missed. Tom Ford won that one. They had a couple of real close frames. Including uh, the, the seventh, which Jordan Brown stole with a clearance. Tom Ford missed a red that had to be seen to be believed, but he did well in the end. He made 100 forward in the last. So it's been high quality already. And now the real drama begins. Jordan Brown looking to settle back into the match. I've had a couple of hours, obviously, since uh, balls were last struck. Yeah, there was lots of uh, quality out there to admire in the first session. But I think often you do look back at the mistakes more than the good stuff. And yeah, there was a blue, wasn't there, in the last frame in particular? Long blue to far right corner that Jordan would probably knock in. Nine out of ten, something like that, went a straight, Tom stepped in. That's a good positive start, though. Yeah, and he's got every reason to be confident when you look at the players he's beaten this week. Jordan Brown, as we see this shot, opening reds up. He's beaten Dave Gilbert, Karen Wilson, John Higgins and Steve Maguire. So, you know, every round he's come up against a, a ranking event winner and he's dispatched them all so far. And worth saying, of course, and he's not in the final yet and neither is Ronnie O'Sullivan. But if they do play <laughs> on Sunday, that's a rematch of the Welsh Open 2021 where it was Jordan Brown who came out on top. Yeah, he wants to take care of business right here Sorry. now, obviously, but the omens are not bad if you're superstitious or whatever. He did beat Maguire as well, didn't he, on the way to that Welsh Open. 31. Triumph, and of course Ronnie in the final. Might not happen, but it could do. Good start, this isn't it? Got to keep nice control of that cue ball. Reds in the open. The ideal settler. 
Yeah, and it suggests as well he spent his time well Three. between sessions positively rather than going over. Like you say, the blue, and there's a couple of other shots here and there as well. That's all gone. It's a long match, this. It's about looking ahead to what's to come. And in the background, all the spin-offs, including a rankings boost, he's already up to 37 now, 26 if he wins this match, and obviously he'll go much higher if he wins the tournament. Yeah, it was quite a poor shot that he could have picked the spot for this black, but just high of straight. Not ideal. I have to put inject some pace into this shot. Try and force the cue ball out into open play. See, you always want to play for two reds. One's not enough. I'm trying to figure out a way of being able to play on multiple reds. Yeah, it may look a little fortunate, but he played it. Not for any single red, but just thinking I'm bound to be on something, and he is. I think also the fact for Jordan, certainly, he's not a serial semi-finalist, anything like that. So he'll be conscious that the eyes will be on him, not just the audience here and everyone watching on TV, but indeed his fellow professionals, just to see how he handles the occasion, especially early on in this final session, get settled in. Yeah, I mean, it has the real feel of a final, doesn't it? One table, two sessions. There's no trophy on the line, but a big crowd here. Big prize to get to that final on Sunday. And so far, this is the perfect start to the concluding session. Jordan Brown, of course, from Antrim. Great friend of Mark Allen, practice partners. Still needs a couple of reds here to put this away. Yeah, good pot, but also the fact he played for a bulk colour made the, the pot itself a wee bit easier. Didn't have to go as deep in the cue ball, so good thinking. He is a good thinker. And as all the Irish players are, he just overcooked this cue ball, mind you, and 67 in front. Obviously looking for 66. one more red now. This is one of these, the, the wing ball, the right-hand wing ball. Do you play the cue ball into bulk? Because if he does, it makes the pot a wee bit easier. Let's see what he does with his cue ball here. Potential frame ball. Now he's playing position twice across for brown-green. Very good. That's excellent. 68.
71. Now, obviously he wants to make a century, but also just keep Tom Ford completely cold in this opening frame of the night. Snooker is becoming in some ways more difficult to predict in terms of who's going to make finals. Of course, we've had Zhang and Chris Wakelin already this season. Albeit Judd Trump, of course, won on the last three tournaments. But the reason for that is there's so many good players right down the rankings. Jordan Bingham. 72. Table's been recovered. It's been playing really nicely today. And we could about to see our third century of the match. Well, he really has found a rich vein of scoring form in this tournament. He made 12 centuries the whole of last season. He's already made six in this tournament. And he's surely going to make a seventh here. Big session in a big match. What a start for the Northern Irishman here. Brilliant. Yeah, it's been nicely constructed as well. Nice shot into the bunch of reds early on, getting the cue ball singing and dancing like that. And he's been careful yet fluent the way he's taken them. I spoke to him just after that win against Neil Robertson in Belfast a couple of weeks back and he didn't give off an air of a man who was remotely surprised that he was standing with me at the, the touch screen having a slight well, got the win and move on net to the next thing and a terrific attitude and a good work ethic as Jordan. So just about the perfect start to the evening session, this. It's golden brown, that. 134, a total clearance from the Antrim man. Back in front at 5-4. No, I suppose, massive damage done, but not great for the old confidence. A little shake of the head from Tom. <laughs> he's, he's always good for a reaction, Tom Ford, isn't he? <laughs> He's had a great week as well. He's beaten Chow Yu Peng, Marco Fu, Mark Selby, Barry Hawkins. So between them, they really have been knocking out the big hitters.
Yes. Well, again, he's not exactly hiding his emotions, is he? <laughs> he's uh, a little fortunate Brown to leave it hampered like that. But this is where Ford needs to just take a few breaths. You can't afford to think already it's going against you. He's done a lot of work, he was saying yesterday, on the mental side in the last month alone, trying to stay positive. Yeah, I must confess, I just don't get that reaction. I just don't think it's... Well, I don't think it's befitting, quite honestly, shaking his head. I mean, Jordan's played a decent shot. He's, you know, cue ball into ball. A little bit, un little bit fortunate to get tight to the brown, but you're not doing yourself any, any favours by that sort of reaction. I guarantee it. Well, Jordan Brown getting on the front foot here, taking this on. Yeah, he obviously feels, well, I've got him where I want him at the minute, rattled. What? So I'm going to press on, take advantage if I can early on in this session. Quite cute as sweetly as he was hoping. It's kind of the way that shot with it when it's dead straight. You tend to hit across it and black goes to the far jaw. Still not too bad though. I think this is one of these shots where maybe the play is top side of blue but over hit it with yellow waiting. He's staying for black. But it's not easy to get the perfect angle from this position. You see, he'd come too straight on the black. I don't think that was the play. I think just getting the cue ball up table with options waiting. It looks very much like it's going to be end of break, but for a far a red to far right corner. He could hold the spot. And play that red. Apart from that, there doesn't appear to be anything doing. Good chance this for Jordan. Target isn't in behind Brown. It's between Brown and Green with a cue ball. Yeah, too thin. He might find himself in a wee spot of trouble. Yeah, it's a good cue ball, but it's no good in terms of line.
It's so noticeable. There's no other tables. There's no sort of bursts of applause or any distractions. It's very much these two, the focus of attention, just sort of ratcheting up the the stakes for them as well. They don't think about all the spin-offs because there's so many of them. Champion of Champions. I'll list them. I, I can think of them. <laughs> Champion of Champions. Top 16, so seeded for the UK Championship. Players Series. Three tournaments there. So winning the tournament, it's 175,000 first prize, but it's worth possibly another 100,000 on top of it. You know, you're in the Masters, maybe the Crucible seeding and all those other events I mentioned. And then he's had a little look at a, a possible three ball. Yeah, and it's also worth about two, two and a half years, maybe even three years of security on the tour. And it's a two-year ranking list, so you keep all those pounds and points for a two-year duration. It gives you something more than significant to build on. Tom Ford currently in place to be at his highest ever ranking, highest ever ranking of 19 at the moment. He's projected to be 18th as things stand <laughs> Tom waiting to hear two words but they didn't <laughs> it didn't happen so it's not going to be a stalemate this because he's going to have to release and play on to the red that he's virtually touching. <laughs> that's, that's actually a really good shot. Almost too good. He didn't mean to be that delicate. Yeah, Jordan... Looking for a line to bulk. It's just such an unusual shot that it's quite risky if you attempted it. I don't know if that was a foul, was it? Did it hit the red? I mean, it doesn't make any massive difference to the frame, but it stayed where it was, the cue ball. The cue ball moved. Not sure if it made the red, though. To say, I don't quite know why I'm not just playing cushion first and the cue ball back to where it is. It's pretty straightforward. That's all smiles, for now, anyway. Yeah, this time Jordan's got that line. for the cue ball somewhere near the yellow if he plays it.
It's kind of one of like one of those cruise ship frames, isn't it? The red zoll sort of is slowly but surely making their way into that right corner. Just need to get the green off its spot now, and then you've got the, <laughs> the full set, really. Yeah, worth a go at this red with the pink and possibly black waiting. Just got to be careful, though. If he does miss it, every chance of releasing a few. Great damage done, the fact that the black's no good. So Tom can't even play the pot there. Not really any use to him. Credit to him for trying to be positive. I think he did, almost trying to reinvent the wheel there. I think he, he knew that he was going to cannon the edge of the cluster of four. He just couldn't hold himself back from attempting it. So trying to screw, or is he playing the punch? And trying to sort of punch it in, but just couldn't get the cue ball into open play well enough. The blue's not really any use to him. He's going to be awkward bridging for a right-hander. And he would have to go really deep on the cue ball with lots of power if he's playing the pot. I don't even see that as an option. This is the problem, the sort of frame it's been all the, the colours are not where they're supposed to be. Yeah, it's tough. He can't quite get his chin down on the cue here, so this is a toughy. Yeah, difficult shot that. One. Yeah, and Okay, there's a chance here at the first red, but it's a nasty old table now, this. Tom Ford just looking to pot a ball in this session. He's not done that yet. But then, yeah, he's shaking his head. Well, it's uh, not the most inviting table, but at least, it, at least Jordan Brown didn't pot the blue, Tom. Yeah, I just don't know why he's shaking his head. What Are you, are you supposed to be left a line-up every time the, guy, the other guy misses? Well, the answer to that is no. Just get on with it.
over. Eight. Now this is a big shot. If he can make this, it might develop. Oh, very good. That's excellent. Now this could develop into a decent chance here to score a few. Is it worth the risk? The one in the open and play a soft to firm cannon on a couple of those reds, the line of four. Is it worth the risk? with a chance of being on pink or black. Yeah, well played. It's a good shot, good positive shot. It's absolutely fine. Nothing to do with the cue ball. Yeah, he's thinking about it long and hard, the, the easier of the two reds, and try to promote two or three others. A wee bit uh, it's kind of similar to a few shots ago. Is it worth the risk? That's the question. He's got something like 21 sitting that is very doable, but he, likelihood is he's not going to win the frame at this visit without shifting those three in the top of your screen. It's worth the risk, I think, because the payoff could be massive, but it's a judgment call and holding back for the time being. Sir. Well, he did well to make 44. It was not straightforward, but the break has ended. But Jordan Brown, as he comes to the table, is going to have to develop things soon.
Seven. Eight. Played that well, quite deliberately for a just off straight low pink. Has he got straight enough on it though? Because he's going to have to hit it with pace, which means the cue ball will widen so the cannon isn't on. So it's going to be a double or a safety shot. That's all he has. Fourteen. Safety shot it is. Jordan Brown. Fourteen. Well, we've already seen in this session, you know, no two frames are the same. We had the total clearance from Jordan Brown in the first frame. This has been more tactical and still in the balance. One point in it. Ball's not in ideal positions. Yellow, brown, close to the cushion. A couple of reds close to cushions. Blue, not great. So still going to take some winning this frame. Yeah, it's one of those tables where it's easy to play a defensive shot, but not a telling one. And it's difficult to play an aggressive safety, so that's why players tend to, in this position, just contain. Yeah, you can play a, a sort of worldy safety shot and it's not going to get you anywhere. Yeah, just pushing the red into the other two. That's an example of Tom not having patience. You know, there was precious little cover in bulk and he was bound to leave something sticking out and he has done. Might not cost him the frame, but I suppose, it, you know, he is that sort of player. He doesn't like the, the tippy-tappy toury stuff that goes on. So, half chance for Jordan. Yeah, great pot. The good thing about this blue, of course, he had that shot. Yes, it was the, another pocket. It was to the yellow pocket earlier. And what did he do? He missed it left as we as he sees it. So let's see if he can adjust. I don't think he'll miss it left this time. His left. Just a bit of a noise there, so reset. One of those, I think, I kind of fancy him to get this, just on the back of the miss earlier. Players are like that. They've got a good memory that way. Let's see. Nah, same thing again. Oh. Yeah, I mean, he was kind of disturbed before he played it. <coughs> and never mind the pink going in. Leaving the red on is the concern, really. But obviously oh. missing it again. Six. You could see the frustration there.
what? They played it lovely, looking for the angle to promote it. The way he walked around the table with a with a hangdog look again. I don't think he's got it, but he does have a a straightforward a double if he wants it. As you could ever have. Here it is. Now, all week long, players have been playing this quite a lot. And with this being a brand new cloth, the miss would be to the low jaw of that right middle pocket. Let's see. The typical miss would be to the low jaw. Good shot. Well played. <laughs> Controlled pace. I think the natural of this plain ball, which he's not doing, he's going deep, so he can't get close to the yellow, really close to it. Sixteen. Players like to be aggressive, but this is medicine time, isn't it? Just try and get the pot, just need the green in addition. So a cast iron safety shot. And he would have some level of control. Time for 16. Both players do get luck. It does happen. Yeah, terrific pot, that brown, just giving him a wee bit breathing room. Now then, green frame ball. Oh, lovely piece of queuing. Five. <coughs> yeah, he's been prepared to be aggressive forward. Of course, it can cost you if you're not getting them, but terrific green. He didn't seem to enjoy any part of the frame, but <laughs> it looks like he's won it. Yeah, so Jordan Brown concedes and uh, two very contrasting frames. We had the total clearance from Brown. We had the, the long fight there that's been won by Tom Ford. So it's 5-5. Five, five. Just waiting for Jordan Brown to return with a possible seven frames left in this uh, pretty gripping semi-final at the International Championship in Tianjin. Referee just, uh, well, people can come in, obviously, until the frame starts. So as long as they take their seats, we're ready to get underway again. There aren't many seats left, actually. <laughs> Been great to see so many people in, and they're watching an engrossing match here.
always looked on, didn't it? It, it looked, certainly from our camera view, that he couldn't get that red thin enough, and sure enough he couldn't, so... Tom Ford in with the first decent chance. He's got to negotiate this cue ball. Yeah, that's well played. What? It's the sort of position all week long players have we've seen so many centuries, of course. Way conditions and pocket sizes have been, but sort of position big breaks have been made all week long. Oh dear. He threw in a quick one. It's not like him. Usually super smooth with that type of shot. Of course, Jordan Brown may have needed to Four. visit the facilities between frames, but I think it was a good idea just to get out of the arena as well and just uh, remind himself of the good position he's in in this match despite losing a long frame and how well he's been playing in general. One of the great enthusiasts for the game. He's a bit of a historian. He likes to throw a few stats around, which uh, makes him quite popular with me and Alan. <laughs> He's got the old Crucible Almanac, you know, that's quite uh, quite a sought-after publication. He actually had one sent to Northern Ireland. With all the facts and figures in about the World Championship. Uh, did, oh. did we give him permission for that? <laughs> I, uh, that's the... <laughs> yeah, it's good, that, isn't it? It's a cool thing. Now he's just got to be careful with the cannon here. Yeah, pushing a red on. It's well played. Good shot. It's strange there's some players who sort of like to present themselves as being a bit too cool for school. You know, I'm not interested in, you know, the snooker history and all that stuff. But Jordan Brown doesn't have any pretense at all. He steeped in the game. And, of course, all the years when he wasn't on tour and he was working in a petrol station, he kept his enthusiasm for snooker, playing at a lower level in the amateur game before working his way back on. But like sometimes you hear in football, don't you? A big, a good touch for a big fella. Jordan's the same. Got a nice touch around the pink and black spot. Twenty. Gotta get that cue ball in that little gap. Gotta beat the red. Beat the red. Oh, perfect. That is excellent. Again, Sean, lovely touch that. So this is developing now into a good chance on the back of the miss green by Tom.
36. sometimes talk about good match play what is good what match play it's probably just sensible play and that was one there that blew it looked like nothing but the way he's played it he can now use the end cushion to almost guarantee the low black for the bunch that's what good match play is just picking the spot that guarantees that so that he can get the bunch get them releasing which shouldn't be a problem and if he gets on one it should be frame over glancing blow and get the cue ball spinning yeah it's one of those the more power you use you just send the cue ball farther forward and quite get the control on it the What's zip Brown, 49. Well, that's got him 48 to the good. Tom was up out of that one quick style, so he could have left something easier, but virtual frame ball, you think, this thin cut red. No problem with the cue ball. So a bad mistake by Tom has, in a roundabout way, presented him with a decent chance to get back into it. That's why you've got to stay strong and not get too down on yourself with a bad rub here and there, a bit of bad luck, because it happens. It happens the other way as well. I know it's easier said than done because it's a tough old business, what? this snooker lark, but if you remain strong in the chair then and you sort of sit there and think, right, OK, when this guy makes the mistake that he's about to make, I'm going to jump all over it and punish him. It's not easy to get that mindset always, but it's the what you've got to strive for. Just to say again, it's that thing where when he makes the mistake, not if he does, you've got to convince yourself of good things out there, that good things are about to happen.
there would be some breakthrough for Ford if he could win the tournament. He turned professional initially in the year 2000, so 23 years. One of these players has been sort of perennially knocking on the door, the fringes of the top 16, a couple of ranking finals, but still looking for that big breakthrough. Yeah, it's quite a tricky situation, this. I mean, it, it can obviously take red-pink here and now, but the pink's going to go just sort of southeast of the, the left-hand red. He wouldn't be overly convinced whether that would tie something else up. And black to one of those two reds is not an absolute cinch. Just got to get the order correct. He might even be risking the cannon. Yeah, it's well done all in all. He just calculated that positionally from black to a red, it, it was tricky and bound to go wrong. So take a mini risk and play the cannon. And it's worked out quite nicely. He'll harbour good memories, obviously, of that red near the cushion. Having doubled it the tail end of the previous frame, so that might keep. Twenty seven. Yeah, one of those if you're gonna play the pot on it, you gotta be right in behind it. Choices, choices, and so many voices. Which one does he take here? Just depends really how he lands on this next colour. Oh, it's gone horribly wrong. That's end the break, barring a double. Horribly wrong. He just got caught between the devil and the deep blue sea that time. So play for the double. It might work in his favour. Yeah, good shot. That's excellent. Got to run, though. Got to run. It's maybe just still on, but only with lots of pace. I'm four, forty-two. So another frame in the balance. We've already had a couple of black ball steals for Jordan Brown. Tom Ford won a couple of close ones as well.
the head has sort of come down as he watches where the cue ball is going to finish, but uh, he's in the driving seat in the frame now. Black ball. Go the front. One. It's one of those he's really got to hit this. He could go in off in the bottom left pocket if he doesn't. Good hit. Yeah, good hit. Perfectly acceptable. In terms of the result. will look inviting there's about three or four good things can happen with a shot a the pot b you got cover c the pot and position this will have a a nice look to it from tom's perspective yeah cover it is it was always likely Good shot again by Tom. It's one of these. Jordan's got to roll the dice here. I don't know. Dead weight's no good. I think he's got to... I don't know. I think he's going to find himself in trouble. I can understand him playing at dead weight. I think Tom will harbour any ambition of taking on the pot. This is where the referee's got to have a good look at this. It's obviously a, a thin coat of yellow paint sticking out there. And that's OK by Tom coming and having a look. That's absolutely fine. He wants to know what he's left because it's not beyond the realms that he misses this altogether. And, of course, the replacement is critical. That's OK. That's all absolutely fine for Tom to just have a look.
Referees uh, Shang Tao. Okay, some help from the marker here. Such a nice uh, target to play it for a snooker here for Tom. Potential for the, the very minimum, two balls to get in behind. Needs to run. Needs to run. Has he left some yellow paint sticking out again? Yeah, he played it. All right, he's not got the snooker, but he did play that quite deliberately to send the yellow down this end. Now, what does Tom have? He's got a pop at this. If he can see the pot, he'll certainly be playing it, and he just about can. Got to be careful of the right middle pocket with a cue ball, because he'll hang pace off this, plain position. By the way, if you're just tuning in for the first time today, this is not the decider. I know it feels like it, because it's been best of 11 all week, but this is actually first of nine. But every ball is being fought for here between these two. In goes the yellow. Great pot from Jordan Brown. Will just kept running on though. So the battle on the yellow becomes the battle on the green. Yeah, free ball guaranteed. What's the leave? It's perfect on the black. Oh, you heard. <laughs> Pulled himself very sarcastically. So, good shot in a little wrap on the table because he may have thrown this frame away. Black ball. Black counts three to lead by eight. Well, actually, lead by 12. Three. Yeah, Tom dictated that exchange on the yellow for. Pretty much the whole duration of it. That Jordan snookered four or five times, but in the end, Jordan Brown has knocked in the balls that matter. Just the Brown then. Well, it's another close one. He's won. He's already won a couple on the black. Fifteen. 
I suspect it won't be the last close one this evening. This it just does have the feeling of being tightly contested all night. Jordan Brown back in front. Tom Ford knew, I think, as he went back to his seat, he most likely lost the frame, leaving the free ball. That's what happened. So an engrossing encounter this, and it is Jordan Brown who's edged back into the lead against Tom Ford. Yeah, it's a good piece of kit, that, isn't it? And a swing round a virtual, swing round the table to see what is on offer. He's in a bit of, bit of a sticky wicket here, is Jordan. Not just the fact how do you get it safe, but of course he can see a Reds full ball. Such a small target, this. The two reds together. Once the bottom one of the two. So in my mistakes, playing on the nearest one. That's a brilliant shot. That is absolutely brilliant, really is. So much so that Tom doesn't have return to bulk. I think one of the things that links these two, they've both grown up in very strong snooker areas, so they've learnt the sort of match play from a young age. Tom Full from Leicester, Jordan Brown, of course, in Northern Ireland. Great tradition of snooker in both locations. There's no doubt Ford has been very positive in his shot selection. Yeah, he did well not to play a push shot there, so a great shot on three counts. The, the pot was deliberate, decent on the yellow. This feels a bigger shot, though, than the red. Uh, nicely done. So, despite sort of getting on his own case at times. As I say, in, in terms of actual shots being played, he's been and he stayed that way despite losing a couple of close frames. I think he would feel going on the attack, obviously, that's his game. The, the, the tighter frames don't really play to his strengths. He's known as a, as a heavy scorer. He's had five maximums, 275 centuries in tournament play. And we'd like to get into a bit of a flow, get some rhythm going now, because it's been a little bit stop-start this evening from his perspective. Four. He's had uh, four century breaks in this tournament. Uh, 
Does he have a, enough of the centre of this cue ball to play for black in the same pocket? I say black in the same pocket, it would be black and pink. Yes, he just about does, so providing this goes as planned, it's a excellent chance to get back on level terms. this cue ball out of there somehow. Thirty-three. Yeah, the problem was he could, oh, he's playing this quickly now. He's losing his cool here, a fraction. This is, well, it's gettable, but he's playing it very quickly. But every credit, what a pot. And a good leave all in all, which he deserves, I think. That was brave and super aggressive because he would have been living the disappointment of about 10 seconds beforehand having not gotten nice on the black. Well, he definitely got on the front foot in this frame. Said he's still out to try and change the, the pattern of the match from his perspective. 49. Working so far. Did finish the first session with a century. And would love to go into the interval here with another frame winning break. You kind of feel like Saying to the referee, rack them up, it's eight each. Of course, uh, we'd rather enjoy the frames along the way, but it's just got that feel of being a very close finish. 57. Two players who may not have been expected necessarily to be facing each other in the semi-finals of such a big tournament, but... They've each earned their place with some big wins over some big names. And there's the potential to play the biggest name of them all in the final on Sunday. Big prize ahead. Tom Ford has really gone for his shots in this frame. He needs this black. It should be six each. So it's going to be as we were when they returned this evening, all square. Yeah, the other brilliant thing about this match as a, a big semi-final, it's so difficult to even think of a good reason why you would pick a winner. That way we stand now, six frames all. I think Tom is more the natural scorer of the two, but I think Jordan is marginally more secure 56. in the safety department. Not more ability in the safety department, just a wee bit more secure. 57. It's the odd time Tom will take a risk that Jordan might not. So 
to all to play for coming out after the interval. Yeah, they'll be some of the biggest frames these two have ever played, actually. As Tom Ford puts this black away for a century. That's the fourth of the match, it's his second. Of course, we started the evening with Jordan Brown's 1-3-4. Yeah, Ford wins the match, remember, for the first time in his career, which began as a professional 23 years ago, he will obtain a top 16 place. So that's one spin-off immediately and the chance, of course, to land a big ranking title after all these years. He clearly made a decision in this frame. I'm going to start going for my shots. Have that positive attitude that he's going to go on the attack. And this has been the result. <laughs> great shot great break he's going to feel great going to the dressing room so Another total clearance, this time from Tom Ford, and this is a really entertaining, exciting semi-final. They were all square when they resumed Fort Safety play. We've had the big breaks, close frames, good skill, tactical play as well. So it's been uh, enjoyable, and the best you feel is yet to come with its scoreline at the moment, because it's been nip and tuck all day. W worth saying, Tom Ford's never been in front. He did trail 3-0 earlier on, and then he kept on catching up, which he's done again. Can he hit the front and just change the maybe the feeling for Jordan Brown if he's suddenly having to chase the match? I'm just watching a few slow motions, but I can tell you the players are walking back into the arena for what could be a really big couple of hours, as I say. One of the biggest sessions of snooker either of them have played. I know Jordan Brown's won a tournament, but in terms of the prize money here, it's over 100,000 more. Jordan Brown then to get us back underway. Six each with Tom Ford in the first semi-final of the International Championship. It's best of 17. And it's now no more intervals. Ford put together a terrific 1-3-3. Just uh, released the shackles a bit. He'd been sort of hemmed him a little bit with good safety play. It was quite uh, a couple of close frames. Decided to really go for his shots and it worked but now of course they've returned everything is on the line in the next few frames By the way, there was, there was nothing really to look back on in terms of previous meetings. Just one match qualified for the Indian Open back in 2019. Ford won 4-3, but you know that would have been played uh, obviously in qualifying environment, best of seven. And uh, Jordan Brown's won a tournament since then, so it didn't really have any bearing on this. He's a bit late for the World Billies Championship. That was held a couple of weeks ago. Peter Gilchrist won it again. Now, 
let's see how straight Tom puts this long red if he takes it on. Yeah, looks like he's he's able to play it and hold the cue ball sort of in the area where the red is with a choice of perhaps blue and black. Does hit that shot nicely, doesn't he? Sort of plays those shots as softly and as elegantly as anyone else in the game. Possibility of the red to far right corner. Just sort of doubling down on what he'd be leaving. When you're talking to billiards, the red that's too from the right of picture, almost a straight half ball in off the brown, but he's not going to be playing that. Peter Gilkers might have. Hey, congratulations, big fella. Peter Gilkers winning that again. That was brilliant, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Atl Atlanta would uh, snooker centre in the West Midlands where uh, they're actually playing one of the Q tournaments this very weekend. to start a bit of applause as some people thought that was going in it looked very close on the way didn't it but not to be it's the worst thing to hear really people start clapping you, you think oh it's in no unfortunately not of uh, what we were thinking earlier in this session that of the two players Tom is more likely to take the odd risk here and there he's not pushing the boat out nothing like that just marginally more prepared than Jordan once again choices it's an easy play into the, the pack and you're bound to be on one, but that's lap of the gods. It's one of those in practice, you would play brown and just play the cannon on almost the pink there. But in practice, there's no consequences not being on one. What's he got then? Yeah, that's not bad. That'll do, lovely. The pre-qualifying round for this tournament was Six. held in back in September in Sheffield. Jordan Brown was actually 5-2 down to Sean O'Sullivan. So all of this at that point looked to distant prospect but he managed to battle through and it's obviously found good form since he's been here I and mean, there's a lot of snooker played since that qualifying round of course he beat Robertson as we know in Belfast yeah 
funny enough, uh, Tom's yeah. match against young Stan Moody, wasn't it? Six four. He he won the last frame on the black when Stan was in position to pot the pink. I think it was with with the rest. It would have been five all. Seems a long time ago now. Yeah. You got to be impressed though with Jordan, haven't you? You know he he hasn't been around. The sort of top echelons of the game for all that long, but he he sort of has a, a top player game when he's anywhere near his best. His standards brilliant. He also knows the game there. Even just that that little hint of side on it, just to get the cue ball into the open. He knows all the plays, all the shots. Yeah, he was a bit unlucky when he turned pro. It was just before the Barry Hearn takeover when there was only sort of six ranking events. And it, also, you didn't have a two-year card then. You were just on, and you had to try and stay on, and he didn't. Very hard to stay on, actually, thinking about it now. And anyway, he was relegated in 2010, and it took eight years to get back on through the Q School. So he was away a long time. I think that's why people in the game were so happy to see him win the tournament, the Welsh Open, because... I recognised, you know, it's not been easy for him. Uh, wasn't, wasn't great on it, was he? And didn't really get close to the pot. It does feel slightly, though, that, you know, it's kind of... The atmosphere's changed a little. The awareness of the position in the match now. We're in the, the final furlong. So the tension is going to mount, you would think. severely hampered here but the good news the the red that expect him to play the good news is he can't leave a free ball the one so it's, yeah the, the one second right of picture play that and err on the thin side knowing that you're not leaving a free ball so again your approach to a shot can sort of dictate he's not playing that one this is a wee bit more risky yeah, but well played. He would have calculated the cannon on the other red. But a good pot. And I think this is where the aggression will stop. That green's not really a shot you want to be playing. Not aggressively anyway. So twice across for the obvious red. Cushions have been sliding, so you expect him to miss this on the right as we see it. See, it takes a dive there. So as you were, Jordy.
farms and for what? For. That kind of thing I'm talking about, although he's left it straight enough that perhaps it's going to stop Tom from playing it. He might actually pot it. Well, I played it super aggressive. What a shot! You see, just the very fact that the pockets are a fraction wider than would be the norm, you're able to play that shot with some aggression. Now, one good positional shot. And he should be in position here, and that is absolutely perfect to hit the front for the first time. Yeah, and what's impressive, he's trying to make things happen now. He's not sort of sitting back and hoping chances will come. He's trying to make the most of every chance he gets and there's good body language about him. We've seen the opposite at times in this match, but it's good to see him on the front foot, feeling positive, going for his shots. He's high up that list, isn't he? The list no one wants to be on. Best players not to win a ranking event. Obviously, Jack Lazowski and there's other people on it. They probably don't want to hear their names right now. But Tom Ford's been on it a while. We saw him in the German Masters final this year, but he was uh, didn't really get anywhere near Ali Carter in Berlin. And had lost to Mark Selby previously in the Paul Hunter Classic. 70. Other than that, it's been a good career, but you feel the best is yet to come, and the next couple of days could be a, a pretty extraordinary breakthrough for Tom Ford. I think there are players in the game that I believe big pockets suit. I'm not saying these are massive, nothing like that, but just, just bigger than normal. I think there are players that it suits. They would never admit that themselves. But what does suit, I think, Tom Ford also, is the fact that the cloths out here this week have been playing beautifully. And that helps him because of the way he hits the ball. He doesn't play it with any pace, generally. He just flicks them around. And you're able to do that on super fine, fast, responsive cloths. And because his cue ball's so neat and tidy as you're seeing here, yes, it's a, an easy chance, as easy as it gets, but... The pressure comes off him as well because the pockets are more playable, shall we say. When he gets in, you can't see him missing. 
39. 40. Well, of course, every frame is significant, but the real significance of this one is it will put him in front for the first time and just transfer a little bit of pressure to Jordan Brown. He's been no worse than level most of the day. But also he will have observed Brown from his seat. The body language has changed for Ford. 46. He's now looking positive, looking confident, looking to get this one. 47. So the black, they both know, should put Tom Ford 7-6 ahead. Just feathers the cue ball around. He's got. I was seeing this the other day. He's got by far the slowest backswing in the game. As far as cue action. And he glides through impact. The softest of touches at times. Beautiful. You see it there, it's a good example of it. Beautiful ball striker, but doesn't hit it. He sort of strokes through it. Sixty eight. Yeah, it's the ball so quietly. That's what 69. I like about it. But you need good conditions to be able to do that. 74. Well, it's still close, but John Brown behind. And obviously, next frame for him doesn't want to fall two down with three to play. So Tom Ford has made his move. And there's enough on for back to back centuries. Eight history. Eight eight. Two great frames from Tom Ford, either side of the interval, one, three, three. Yeah, massive event, isn't it? I was just thinking, actually, with Tom Ford, you know, you get players that have got, obviously, undoubted quality, but I was thinking about the Crucible, the World Championship, Barry Hawkins, those sort of guys. Tom Ford's not one of them, isn't it? Strangely, you know, you don't think of him winning big matches at the Crucible. Seven six it is to Tom Ford from the snooker hotbed of Leicester. Yeah, if he if he wins this match, it's surely the biggest win of his career because it puts him into a big money final, potentially against Ronnie O'Sullivan. So there's a lot on the line, he'd be in the top sixteen. And that would be an important milestone because it would get him seeded for the UK Championship. Wouldn't have to go through the qualifying. He'd be there as a top 16 seed. Of course, he was a semi-finalist in York last year. So all these carrots are dangling, aren't they? It's like sort of baubles on the Christmas tree in the, in the background to be picked off. But uh, first, he's got to get to nine frames.
Yeah, I don't think Tom deliberately left this red hanging out, the one near the blue. It's far from easy. The downside to playing it, you're pretty much guaranteed to leave something should you miss it. But 7-6 behind now, no time like the present. Got to start pressing at some stage. Time of the match. We're obviously, Tom in front for the first time. He's worked long and hard for this. This is when you don't want to give a freebie away and just invite Jordan to get ahead of steam up because at the moment Tom's in possession of the momentum out there. Oh, it's an unbelievable shot. That is brilliant. That is brilliant. Leaving plenty. Yeah, and, and from the talk of the pockets in this tournament, the, the middles don't really come into it. They, they're always tough, the middles. You've got to be so precise. And that was. Well, he's on a bit of a charge here. And as I say, the work he has done with the person he's been seeing for help with the sort of mental side of snooker, that is when the, it pays off in situations like this. He said, he got an extraordinary phrase yesterday, he said there'd been times when he said his head's been rolling around in the car park like a football at tournaments, <laughs> which is some image to conjure up. But uh, the last sort of half an hour in this match, he's been exemplary, actually, his attitude and his focus. i just got visions of Vivian and the young ones there. So <laughs> For those of you old enough... <laughs> I mean, he actually said that the German Masters final, he pointed out, you know, that it was quite recent. He said, well, my body was there, but I sort of wasn't. He didn't feel good at all. But anyway, that's all in the past. Right now, he's feeling great. Problem getting on the, the lone loose red. But what follows it is the problem. that word momentum just uh, a few minutes ago and people believe it it's a load of old nonsense but it, it actually is quite a big thing I, I know from experience out there and sometimes it just happens when you can at least expect it but when you've got it, it is, it's a massive thing you, you just sort of feel good the other guy's pinned to the chair can't get any chances it's just a question of how long how long you can keep hold of it. I mean, even here, it's probably going to be end of break, but it's okay, it's all fine. Because he's in command. Oh. 
account for? 19. <laughs> well, some result actually in the end there. Got fortunate really where it finished, but it sort of sums up really the way the match has turned around. I guess Brown could have been in more trouble though. The pack sort of tight as it is. It wasn't that hard really to roll into them. But the concern for him is he's observed how, how good Ford is clearly feeling in himself. He was giving away signs earlier on that the opposite was true, but that's not been the case in the last couple of frames. Yeah, he's in a stage of the match and in complete control and every time he's left any sort of shot, it's an easy put away to keep Jordan sort of under the cosh. Yeah, it's true. Jordan Brown's just not seeing pots right now. He always seems to be having to play safe and extricate himself from difficulty. Yeah, here's another up behind the yellow, isn't it? It's, it's pretty straightforward, actually. thin edge, I think. He doesn't want to push reds into the open too much. Once again, it was a good lead, but a great shot and perfect on the brown. The other thing about it, it's a natural just to top it through and the cue ball just drift across the face of the pink for those two reds diagonally together. There it is, just drift across the face of the pink, and he's perfect again. Brilliant shot. Five. Oh, has he got the push cannon here? If he's got the push cannon to get the black into play, it's a chance to win the frame. He's got it, and he's played it perfect. Everything at the moment is going perfectly for Tom Ford. Yeah, he's really stepped it up, isn't he? Hasn't he? He's not making really any errors at all. Completely focused on what he's doing. Sensing the winning line. And not shirking from it. 13. Fourteen. 
So concern for Jordan Brown. The concern is he's just not getting any chances. Every time he comes to the table, he seems to be in a bit of trouble. And then leaving any sort of chance, and it was only a sort of shot to nothing that Ford had, leaving any sort of chance, Tom Ford steps in. Then when he does make a mistake, it lands 29. perfect again. Nothing to do with the cue ball. He's got pink waiting. In whichever pocket he wants, actually. The perfect split, and he didn't play it. That's not a critique. That's it's just a another sign of the way this match has been the last two or three frames. There, just two more reds. It's funny as well, isn't it? When you're in such good nick and such good touch at any given time, you do all the right things. He goes and has a little sip of water just to sort of compose himself and. A 20 second timeout. Thinking. 36. Exactly what you have to be right now. Just the job in hand. 37. Well, it's been some performance over the last three frames. Faultless, really. You've got to say, and this ball to get to within one of the final. Jordan Brown just cannot get in right now. Tom Ford in complete control of himself and of this match. 52. Three. Came close yesterday, didn't he, against Hawkins to making three successive centuries. He made twos on him for a third. Didn't quite happen, but he can do this. He can reel frames off in pretty swift succession. In fact, he once made four in a row back in 2005 in one of the qualifiers. Yeah, and it's not just the breaks. It's, it's the good safety he's played to keep Brown out, to force the openings. All round excellent. So, <laughs> the colours then four, three in a row, centuries. It's turning into perhaps the most memorable match of his whole career. Certainly the most significant if he wins it. Six five down, the question was, would he wilt or would he stand Nine, up and six. fight? Well, this is our answer. This pink for three centuries in three frames. Wonderful stuff from Tom Ford. Brilliant performance from him. He is making a real dash for the winning line. 109 the clearance from the Leicester man. He needs one more. And he's in the final. So, Jordan Brown who had never trailed until frame 13 is now in deep trouble. It, the score line's bad enough, 8-6 to Ford, but it's just how well Tom Ford has played. Three centuries in a row, really good safety play along the way as well. And 
Okay, it can, of course, change back, but it's going to take something special now. And that break-off shot is not a good start from Jordan Brown. Not good at all. Okay, the bad news is the cue ball is almost tight to the cushion, but the good news get nothing to do with it as long as he gets the pot. Any sort of cannon on a wing ball, and he's perfect. And just slip past it. But I think Six. Absolutely fine. I tell you, he would have loved this performance. The late Willie Thorne, who uh, played his own very attacking form of snooker in his heyday. And, of course, uh, all the players from Leicester looked up to him. They played at the Willie Thorne Snooker Centre run by his brother Malcolm, who's also sadly passed away. But this would be his sort of game, his sort of snooker. Yeah, okay, it's got to be the one near the black here. That's the one that offers a chance to keep this break progressing. Can he just release the cue ball off the bunch? Just release it off them. Yes, he can. Oh, he's taking his eye off the pot. Wow. Jordan Brown br breathes again. Wow. It's incredible, isn't it? A straightforward red, and all you're thinking about is the cannon. We've all been there, and it's always going to be the case. The amount of times it happens is uncanny. If you're putting that red and just going up for the top side of the blue, it's unmissable. Wow. Well, he gets to pot a ball after three frames where he's basically been a spectator. So it could have been over there. I mean, he walked back to his seat after the break-off pretty sluggishly, fearing the worst, understandably, what he'd seen. But a reprieve has come along. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, what? maybe that's just a... Example of the fact he's had so little table time and he's bang under it as well, the way Ford's played, but that was unexpected. It's a tough job, but Jordan's going to just try and stay 
as positive as he can in the chair. It's out of his hands. I'm not saying it's a chance to win the match. Far from it. But he's got to try and do something in the chair to try and just stay as present as he can. He's got to believe that there's one more chance still to come for him. Seven. Seen many a match one from two down with a possible three to play, but he's being swamped at the moment. He's in a tailspin and he needs a bit of help from Tom to rectify the situation. Now, here's the money ball. Well, I was going to say pink, but the black somehow or other has almost appeared from nowhere, and he's quite nicely on it. It just feels like it's been a story of the, the power of positive thinking. He's tried to make things happen, and they have done. And he's getting, I guess you could argue, the rewards for that attitude. So it's in his hands whether he can put it away here. It kind of feels like a final. It would be a huge achievement to win because he'd be in the top 16, regardless of whether he won. So he could put everything into then trying to win that trophy and the big first prize. Uh, looks like he's gone wrong. Caught that red. Yes, he potted it on the thin side, which kept the cue ball tighter to the position. 15. But he's in a very strong, strong position here. Just park the cue ball tight to the bolt cushion somewhere. Don't get too ambitious with this cue ball because Jordan there's a mistake in him the way he's feeling right now yeah let's say you know he, he's looking for the golden safety shot but that's the shot there where his cue is just right of that pocket just leave the cue ball up there. Ask some sort of question of Jordan for the, the return. Sometimes if you can't get cover, don't play for cover. Just play for distance. Yeah, that's the shot. That's the shot to play, given the situation. 15. Evening for Tom Ford. He's beaten Jordan Brown 9 6. And he has tomorrow off. He may need it after the, those exertions, but he'll be coming into the final surely on Sunday, full of confidence to play either Ronnie O'Sullivan or Jean Gander. Of course.